Hey everyone, Kelly here. Today I'm going to give you a very quick and brief palette review followed by a painting and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've been doing. So here's the new palette that I got. It's a 33 well plastic palette and I like it because it has slanted wells and 33 colors is enough for me. It really is. I've been doing this long enough now. I know what colors I like and I know that I prefer the slanted wells to the um, the half pans and the full pans even. Because the slant helps me to be able to um, keep a little bit of water going and keep a little bit of water separate from the rest of the paint. Now I know that I want these wells to be turned the other direction. So I'm going to find a screwdriver here and I'm going to pull that palette out because the 33 wells are removable from this palette. You just have to get the screwdriver underneath the lip there and it, it's a little tricky you have to get it in underneath and then while you've got the corner of it up get your get your finger underneath there and get it lifted up and there it is so you can turn the wells whichever direction you want to um, I like this also because you can start over whenever you're ready to you can clean this palette out it's moisture proof and leak proof so if you take it with you um, it's supposed to not leak. Now I can't vouch for that. I probably wouldn't take this big palette with me because I have travel palettes, just little metal ones that I carry with me when I'm on the go. Um, I'm going to go clean this thoroughly before I put any paint in it. And then I'm going to put my paint in it. I'm going to show you very quickly the little tube squirting into the wells. Um, it's not the most exciting part of it, but it is important. You have to have the paint in the wells in order to use the wells to hold the paint so that you can paint with them. And I'm getting the very last bits out of several of my tubes. I like to do that. It's nice to get rid of those tubes that just have a tiny little bit in them. You may be wondering why I even got a new palette. It seems like I just got a new palette for the spring colors. It's true. I have a palette problem. Some women like handbags and shoes and clothing. No. Um, my biggest weak thing that I can't help but compulsively buy are watercolor palettes and art supplies. But watercolor palettes are a very big part of my water. It's a big part of my art supply addiction. I have tried just about every palette there is on the market. Don't be mad at me. We never go anywhere. <laughs> we don't buy anything. Uh, like I said, I don't have any other shopping um, bad habits except for art supplies. And I usually try to find it as cheaply and as on sale as possible. Unless it's local and then I'll try to buy local. Okay, now I've squirted all the paint in there. It's all in there. So I'm going to very quickly make a swatch card. It didn't, it took a lot longer than this. But I recently found a really cool plastic um, T-square. And it works really well for drawing uh, perpendicular and horizontal, or perpendicular and parallel lines if you're using a watercolor block. It has to be a watercolor block or I suppose you could mount the paper on something and you would just have to make sure that it was perfectly square to the paper. 
you know, whatever you mounted it on, you have to make your, make sure your, your paper is perfectly square to it. And then you can take, um, you can take your T-square and a right triangle and you can make all kinds of grids. It's pretty handy. And I think that the, um, the plastic ruler cost me about $4 at Dick Blick, but I have to, I have to tell you, I recently found a better one. The one that I got at Dick Blick is only a 12 inch and I really need a 15 or an 18 inch because most of my watercolor blocks, hey, if I'm gonna invest in a watercolor block, it's going to be bigger than 8 by 10. So, as I finish this up, you can see here it looks pretty good. You can put your, I can put my rectangular palette, my ceramic palette in there. But you know what I've found out? I've been actually mixing a little bit on this plastic palette. I may have to eat my words because it works okay. It's not bad. It's not very good for mixtures, like for consistent washes, but it's okay for mixing a little puddle of mix. Anyway, onto the painting. So here's my new plastic T-square that is 18 inches. It's a little heavier duty. I got it at Hobby Lobby and it cost me about 11 bucks. It's worth it though. It's sturdier, it's heavier. It's not gonna warp as easily. And um, I do, I like a lot of geometric things. So these things work really, help, they're helpful for me. So, okay, so here's what's going on with me artistically lately. I have been having an angsty funk. Um, I think trying to keep up with the demand, I guess you would say it's like, I feel like there's a demand to, to be very, very prolific so that you can stay relevant on social media like Instagram. And um, it's causing me to try to produce art that I think will do well on social media or things that I can do quickly so I can post often. And it freaks me out. But this time I decided to do something just because I enjoy doing it. So I got some inspiration from Vasily Kandinsky and the Bauhaus. And I pulled out my straight edges and my T-squares. And I just had fun with it with my circle templates. And I just played around with shape and line and integrating them and looking at the colors and figuring out how I was going to put one color up against another and what the color palette was going to be. I just got lost in the art and it was, it was wonderful. I highly recommend it. Especially now, I'm going to have to really keep that mindset because... Um, work has gone pretty much back to full time and in my personal life I had to take on some new responsibilities they're just not optional and they're going to be time consuming and I think the only way for me to make this work is to let my art be my self-care like it always has been and stop worrying about trying to impress Instagram right I mean because it's not fun it's just it, looking over the statistics and how many people looked at this and how many people looked at that and how many people saved it or visited your profile. And um, if you're gone for a little while, do you lose followers because they weren't really following you for your art. They were following you because you were following them. And if you're not on Instagram to constantly like and comment on their content, they're gone. They don't want to follow you anymore, which I guess really that should kind of suss it out, right? Because you shouldn't follow somebody just because they're going to follow you. It's, it's kind of a circle jerk, right? Um, there are a lot of artists that I follow and they frankly 
don't know. <laughs> they don't know I'm alive. They don't know anything about my art and they're too busy doing their thing. And really, that's the way it should be. You should like someone's art and follow them because you like their art. And they should follow you because they like your art. And it shouldn't be, um, yeah, it, yeah, it just gets oogie. So anyway, I've decided I'm just going to paint because I like it or draw because I like it and do it when it works for me. So art is going back to being um, therapy and self-care. And meanwhile, I will work on those skills that I want to build. There's an artist that I really admire, and he does some really big um, watercolors. I, I would say they might even be like, I don't know, five by eight feet. And he fills the backgrounds in with a number four round brush. It just blows me away. I am gobsmacked and so inspired by watching him do this. Um, and I'm still trying to get my, uh, my washes even on these little four by six inch pieces. And so that's what kind of what I was working on with this, but um, I found that it's not always even anyway no matter how careful I am. Um, any little changes in humidity can affect how fast the paint dries and therefore, you know, how even the wash is, how much the pigment granulate seems to have a big effect on it. And so for this painting, I didn't worry too much about it. I mean, I, I did work on getting an even wash, but if it wasn't perfect, I didn't worry too much about it. And um, I just really had fun figuring out how where I was going to place everything and what color was going to go up against an, the other color. Apparently, in the Bauhaus school, for a little while, um, they mostly focused on, for shapes, it was a triangle, a circle, and a square. And the triangles were yellow. The circles were red and the squares were blue, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so I kind of started out with that idea and then decided that that wasn't going to work. Um, but I got some inspiration looking at Vasily Kandinsky's paintings. Some He's an artist I've always really enjoyed looking at his work. And so this painting is probably pretty heavily influenced by Kandinsky's circles. And something else I experimented with was adding a pencil shading to some of the shapes to give it a little depth instead of just building up layer upon layer of watercolor. Um, I decided to try adding some shading with um, just my mechanical pencil, which has an HB lead in it, which is the equivalent of a number two pencil and then um, um, I got my poor old tortillas also known as blending stumps out and I blended around the edges and um, you'll see in a little bit how that works yeah, and I was trying to determine you know where neutral colors would go and because I think neutral colors really um, ground out and help to uh, emphasize color in other areas. So in these boxes, I added some neutral tint. And something else about um, geometric paintings and drawings and works of art, have you noticed that they have almost a kind of rhythm to them? Um, it almost has a little bit of a kinetic feel even though it's just a two-dimensional piece of art, um, there's often a feeling of movement. And um, I kind of wanted this to feel like a snapshot of something that's moving and you catch it in mid-movement and you make it still for just a moment. 
And here's where I was telling you that I um, added shading with my mechanical pencil and then went back and blended it in with the blending stump. This took a surprisingly long time to do. As I was doing it, I was thinking, oh, maybe, I should, maybe I just should have uh, taken a very small brush and um, brushed a little neutral tint in there. And I could have. But one thing about um, neutral tint or black, when you mix it with yellow or put it on top of yellow and it's transparent, it's going to turn kind of green. And I really didn't want that. So um, I suppose I could have used its opposite color and put in a little bit of a purplish mix, but I didn't. I just decided to do it with the pencil. And overall, I think that I like the effect of it, and it's something I'm going to do again. So I want to take a moment to thank my new subscribers who've recently subscribed. I got a few more, and I want to thank my subscribers who've been sticking around with me as I sporadically post YouTube videos. Um, and if you're new here and you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe, comment, tell all your friends and family, and hey, spread the word. Art is a throb. It's so much fun. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.